Hello and welcome to the Nintendo Network. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate wears the badge Ultimate proudly and it is just. The insane amount of work involved, every character returning, and then there are the spirit battles. With over 1300 current spirits and a thousand of them being in the form of a battle, there are so many nods to the mini franchises that my neck starts to hurt. But it's nearly impossible to understand every spirit battle reference and why they are well thought out and fit that character. Some can be obvious, some are far more obscure. So I'm starting a new series, explaining every spirit battle. Each video will be a different franchise because doing one video for every spirit battle would be insane. There'll be no particular order in what franchises I do one after the other. Just depends on when I get all the footage as many battles will be random on the spirit board. And I will only be covering the battles themselves, not spirits obtained through summoning and whatnot. Another thing to note, just assume because it does apply 99% of the time, the costume the fighter is wearing is a nod to the spirit character in one form or another. Mentioning the costume looks like a spiny over and over again will just get annoying. So get ready for your turn, because Dragon Quest is traditionally a turn-based game? I know someone is laughing out there. Anyways, this is every Dragon Quest spirit battle explained. The hero's comrade spirit is represented by a small local softball team with the amount of fighters you have to face. The spirits represent all the party members that join you in Dragon Quest XI. So let's go down the line, shall we? The small female Robin represents the tiny mage Veronica. Zero Suit Samus represents Jade, a martial artist, as Zero Suit will start the battle with the sword item. King Dedede is the similar rotund man Rab, Zelda as the healer Serena, Ike as Hendrik the knight, Link as Eric the former thief, and Sheik as Silvando the performer, and please don't cut off my head if I got two of these mixed up. This is what it looks like to me and for my research. On top of the gauntlet that is facing all these characters, some two at a time, they have increased melee damage and move speed in addition to more powerful smash attacks. This stamina battle has you fighting on Drassiel's altar while the heroes go forth with determination plays. The Cetacea spirit is represented by a giant jumping King K. Rule and a hero in the Eleven costume. The Cetacea is the transport for the hero and his comrades in Dragon Quest XI. K. Rule is colored white like the creature itself and will pretty much flop around most of the battle as it is mostly used for transportation. But the hero will attempt to defeat you and protect it. K. Rule also has super armor making him harder to deal with. This time stamina battle has the heroes going forth with determination plain. The slime spirit is represented by five blue kirbys and once you defeat them a giant blue kirby will appear representing King Slime, the biggest most royal slime there is. You fight it out on Gaur Plains to represent a casual random field that, even without looking it up, I would bet is in most, if not all, Dragon Quest games that have slimes in them. And that is pretty much all of them. I mean, they're kind of the franchise mascot. You know, kind of like the minions, only much more tolerable. Anyways, they will favor their neutral air special attack to simulate a simple attack by the slimes themselves. This stamina battle has fighting spirits from Dragon Quest III playing. The Draki Spirit is represented by three Meta Knights while on Dracula's castle. Oh, how subtle. Drakis are common enemies that come in many different palette swaps, so the three different colored Meta Knights represent the different types of Drakis the heroes have faced on the many Dragon Quest quests. The Meta Knights have increased jump power, not to flying the bats do of course, and your defense is hit a bit. To represent bats, Dracula sucking your energy from you. This time stamina battle has unflinching courage playing. The Golem Spirit is represented by a giant yellow brownish rob to represent the huge monster. You fight on Mushroomy Kingdom to represent the walled city of Cantlin, where Golem was a boss in the first Dragon Quest game. Rob has super armor and is unflinchable, but will periodically go to sleep. This gives the battle a feel of an old school JRPG, where he attacks and he stays still while you attack and back and forth in a stamina battle. Rob's punches and elbow strikes are powered up as Fighting Spirit from Dragon Quest 3 plays. The Great Saber Cup Spirit is represented by a tiny Pichu and a giant Pikachu that represents a Great Saber Cat, and presumably it's a mother in this scenario. I say this because the Pichu will avoid fighting as the Pikachu will defend it. Pichu will shield often to defend itself and you must defeat it to win the battle. Also soccer balls will commonly spawn as cats like to chase round things, so, yeah? Sure, let's go with that. You fight on Gaara Plains, again to represent a random field like in any Dragon Quest, heck any RPG game while marching through the fields plays. The liquid metal slime is represented by a metal Kirby. This stamina battle has Kirby start with very little HP, but he has super armor and is hard to flinch. 
He moves like Sonic with a bunny hood and evades you constantly. Defense is buffed, has a Franklin badge attached, and this is a quick timed battle. This is a nod to how liquid metal slimes have high evade and is immune to most magic, but yield high rewards if you defeat it. You battle it out on Great Cave Offensive, battlefield form, because the regular one would just be mean, as the liquid metal slimes tend to live in caves. Battle of the Glory Dragon Quest 4 plays. And that is every Dragon Quest Spear Battle explained. And man, oh man, these are some fun battles. I do wish we would have gotten more than just some random monsters, but the series does seem to be known for them. I mean, look at the popularity of slime. But I hope this gives you some more context on those spirit battles. Thank you for joining me here at the Nintendo Network. What was your favorite Dragon Quest spirit battle? If you like this, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and maybe help me out on Patreon. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to deeply ponder why Nintendo is releasing Link's Awakening and Dragon Quest XI a week apart. Is it because they hate me? I think it's because they hate me.